Hey there, you're listening to the DIY Marketing School Podcast. I'm your host and your marketing coach, Melanie Diane Howe. And today, I'm also your myth buster because we are gonna bust some LinkedIn myths. Well, hello there. Okay, I am gonna tell you, I am so excited about today's episode for a couple of reasons. One, it's about LinkedIn. And if you've been living under a business strategy marketing rock lately, then you may not know this, but LinkedIn is kind of where it's at right now. And a lot of people are starting to talk about it. So I thought it's time for me to share my thoughts about LinkedIn. And also, just FYI, I am actually going to be doing a LinkedIn workshop. So if you want information about that, I'm actually going to be conducting this workshop live locally in my hometown, but I am also going to offer an online virtual version as well that will be a separate time. It will be live and it will be recorded. But um, for the information on that, just check out my website at the uh, link melaniediane.com forward slash LinkedIn. There will, of course, be a link in the show notes. But so not only am I excited because I'm talking about LinkedIn, but the other reason is because I'm kind of changing up the format for today's episode. And I got to tell you, as I was prepping for this episode in this format, I was kind of getting excited. Like, this is going to be fun. So don't be surprised if there are some future episodes that are basically myth busting some marketing myths. And so today I'm going to do some LinkedIn myth busting. All right. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about it because I think there's a lot of, you know, perception out there about LinkedIn, a lot of opinions, a lot of thoughts. And I think that innocently people are just unaware that maybe there's a different way to think about some things. So I'm going to share with you some myths and I'm going to um, debunk them and we're going to talk about why they're debunked and what you need to know about these things and why you should be thinking about LinkedIn and your marketing strategy if it's not already part of it. So that is my goal for today's episode is to get you opening up your mind to this platform if you're not using it at all or if you used it a long time ago and you haven't used it for a long time, getting you to consider returning to this platform and revisiting your strategy and how you utilize it. So um, that's what we're going to do. And my goal is that you think through that and get intrigued and explore this platform because I do think it's amazing especially right now. I think we're in this window of opportunity with the platform. And uh, I'll share a little bit about that as I uh, go through these myths. So shall we get started? Let's do this. Okay, myth number one is my LinkedIn profile is just an online version of my resume. This myth is so busted, you guys. It is so busted. Here's the deal. Your LinkedIn profile, while yes, can somewhat feel like an online version of your resume, it can also be so much more. There are so many uh, features in the profile. I always say if you have a fully optimized profile, it is way more than an online version of your resume. Here's one thing I'll also say. In those sections where you are going to put in your previous employment experience, your title, and you describe you know what you did, you can be as fun and creative as, as you want in those sections. So it doesn't have to just be replicated information as to what's on your online or your resume. It can be all kinds of other great things. So I just think that stuff is great. You can also attach things to that section if you want to showcase some work. So some documents, uh, some videos. So you can't do that on a piece of paper resume. You know what I mean? You can't put a little video on there. Sure, you could put a hyperlink and take it to a website. But So I'm just saying that the profile can be as interesting as you want to make it. But here's something else that I don't think people realize, that if your profile is optimized, it's going to actually, now that there are these additional sections that weren't there a few years ago when LinkedIn kind of first started, and, and I'll say this, LinkedIn, your profile pretty much used to be an online version of your resume. It isn't anymore, okay? If you haven't revisited this platform and optimized your profile, then it probably is just an online version of your resume. But you can 
in your profile, for example, there's a, you can have, there are ways that you can optimize it so that you can showcase links to your work. You can have videos uh, that you can showcase. For example, if you go to my LinkedIn profile, which I'll link in the show notes, you can see that I have a podcast and you can go right to this podcast and you can see that I also have a free uh, online course uh, called Social Media Foundations that is for anyone who is wanting to use social media as a professional or in their business. And it's a free, it takes them to the free course. So you can access not only my podcast, but also this free online course that I've created. Uh, That is a lot more than an online version of your resume. So the reason this myth is busted is because there are definitely more features than what a resume can offer you. And it's, there is, is, there's an interactive approach to it. People can endorse you for certain skills Um, And, you know, you can just build upon it and build upon it. The more you use the platform, the more you're going to be able to optimize your presence in your profile. So that myth is totally busted. All right. So let's just uh, know that it's way more than an online resume if you want to make it that way. If you want it to just be an online version of your resume, you can certainly do that. I don't recommend it. I absolutely recommend you optimize your not only than how I recommend you optimize all of your other social media profiles as well, which means you're taking full advantage of all of the features that the platforms offer you in your profile. All right, now that now that you've got a feel for how this episode's going to go, this is fun, right? I, I'm kind of all about this myth busting right now. Okay, so myth number two, LinkedIn is just for finding a new job or for finding employees for my company. Nope, this myth is so busted, so, so, so busted. Now, I understand why people feel this way or think this because honestly, when LinkedIn first came out, you know, it was a professional networking platform, very much geared towards finding new opportunities or recruiting employees. Very, very, very much that was the main objective of this platform. And it became an online interactive social community where you could network with people you wanted to go work for, or you wanted to put yourself out there as you were looking for new opportunities. (laughs) There used to be, I remember it used to be when you worked in corporate and all of a sudden, if you saw someone all of a sudden like changing their profile picture and like updating their their profile and kind of all of a sudden, you know, showing up on LinkedIn, it was kind of obvious that they were looking for a new job. That is not the case anymore. So this myth is also busted. Now, again, it's changed. So LinkedIn is an amazing platform to also learn. It's a great platform to connect with peers in your industry. It's a great platform to participate in groups. There are groups. There's a group feature in LinkedIn, of course. Um, LinkedIn is a great place for you to also find new leads or customers. Uh, you can showcase yourself and share your you know, your free content with uh, everyone on LinkedIn as well. It's not just a place for people to go when they want a new job. It really isn't. So not only, yes, there are a lot of people that are creating those connections and that network for their professional development, but people are also learning on this platform. They are consuming content that helps them be a better professional, helps them with their mindset, helps them live a better life, right? Right. So I want you to think of it this way. LinkedIn is, yes, it's a social media platform for professionals, but professionals like have all kinds of reasons to be on there other than just looking for a job. So people are actually hanging out, networking, having professional, intentional conversations outside of just looking for a job. So regardless of whether people are hating their job, loving their job, building a business, loving their business, hating their business, whatever it is, people are on the platform. And there's so much more to it now. There's just a lot more opportunity to learn and grow and enrich your relationships. And so people are also on there and they are consuming content and becoming clients and customers through the content that they're consuming on LinkedIn as well. So keep that in mind. This is not just the platform anymore for finding a new job or recruiting employees. So that myth is also busted. Okay, next, uh, the next myth, this is a good one. And I'm going to try to explain this without going into too much of a tangent. But the myth is simply this, LinkedIn isn't for my business. Now, 
I don't know what business you're in because I can't see you right now, but I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, what I want you to know is that you don't just have to be in corporate or in a B2B business to business world to have space and a need and relevancy in this platform. Now, here's the example I really like to give. So let's say, I think if, uh, uh, I'm going to say a nutritionist or a fitness instructor, okay, they're in the business of, you know, physical wellness and nutrition. They're going to say, ah, LinkedIn's not really where I need to spend my time. Probably Instagram is where I need to spend my time. You know, people are, they're, it's just, that's too corporate It's, my business doesn't really fit LinkedIn. Well, I'm going to challenge you. And first I'm going to say, yes, you're smart because I do think Instagram is a great place for you to probably hang out. But I also want you to think about it this way. While traditionally that type of business probably didn't have a lot of, uh, didn't have a place on LinkedIn, that is not the case anymore because of the myth I just, de- I already debunked that it's not, people are not on there just to look for a job. They're on there to learn and grow, but they are probably in a, they're professional, meaning they're not a stay at home they have a job, either they work somewhere or they're, they have their own business or they're, you know, um, they are aspiring to be an entrepreneur or they are aspiring to work in corporate, right? Here's the thing. People who work also need to eat healthy. People who own businesses need to adopt a physical wellness mindset and um, regimen. People who are looking for jobs need to also be healthy and maybe also need to lose some weight and learn how to eat better. So the professional, uh, you know, the working person still needs your services, right? So LinkedIn, yes, there is a place for you in your business. So I will challenge you. I think that LinkedIn has room for almost every business professional, regardless of what you do. I think that you have to remember this. Think of it this way. It is a social media platform where professionals are talking and networking and learning and growing together. And, you know, you, unless you are marketing straight up to a stay at home mother who literally does not work, does not want to work, does not have any desire to work, she's probably not going to be on LinkedIn. So if that's your target market, then in that situation, LinkedIn might not be for your business, but that I think is a, um, a small percentage of those of you listening to me right now. So if you're saying to yourself that you don't think that LinkedIn has a place for you and your business and what you do and how you help people, I want to challenge you. And I want you to remember that, that the LinkedIn is a bunch of professionals, a bunch of working people. Okay. When I say professional, I mean, they, they are working, they are working either already or they're working towards working on something. And so whether you're teaching yoga, mindset, diet, nutrition, cooking, you know, selling vacuums, <laughs> interior designing, working people need those things too. Okay. Working people need a vacuum as well. So you can help them out. Okay. That myth is debunked. Okay. Moving on. This is a good one too. And this one especially applies. I love this one because I have kind of a crazy personality. Those of you that know me know that. So this one is, the myth is, I can't be myself on LinkedIn because it's just too stuffy. Ooh, this myth is also debunked. So I will challenge you again. I do think that the tone, uh, okay, here's the deal. Back in the day, this probably would not have been debunked. It was very much a place, a corporate space, corporate kind of tone of voice everywhere. And if you were kind of a goofy, crazy, silly, whatever, then it probably overall, you probably didn't fit in with the overall tone of how everyone else was interacting, right? So I used to actually, a long time ago, when I first started teaching social media, this was four, five, this was four years ago, four or five years ago. LinkedIn was still pretty much this just kind of professional networking, looking for a job type of network. And I used to have these pictures and I used to say, this is you. 
these are the social media platforms where you can be a little bit more personal, a little bit more intimate. And then this, these are the social media platforms. This is the tone of voice you might have on these social media platforms. And at LinkedIn, it showed like a picture of me in like, you know, my blazer jacket and my super professional outfit with my, you know, glasses on. I looked all kind of like librarian-ish almost. And then like the, you know, the Facebook one and the Instagram one was me kind of being goofy in like my t-shirt and heels, right? Well, that that is not the case anymore. I'm going to go ahead and say that is not the case anymore. Yes, I just made a fart noise on my podcast. So what are you going to do about it? You get the point. So here's the thing. You need to be you no matter what. You need to be you, but just know that it depends on your ideal customer. It depends on your ideal connection, the people. You know, what is your goal with using LinkedIn? Are you trying to, you know, network with peers? Are you trying to find new customers? You know, what exactly is your goal? You need to be show up in that that way based on those goals. So if you have a particular image that you need to, that you are when you're working with clients and that particular image might be different than, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends, well, then you need to make no differently than how you would dress up to go meet with a client versus how you would dress up to go out for beers with your friends, right? You've got to understand that no differently than everything else you do in social media. But my point is, is that if you don't have those different tones or different styles based on what you're doing and who you're with, then just show up as you are. Show up how you would, no matter what. So I want you, when you use social media, think of each platform as you're walking into a room, right? I used to, I, I like to use this analogy that, you know, you walk into the Facebook room, it can probably feel pretty casual. It's with family and friends, right? You walk into the Instagram room, you're, you're still with your family and your friends, but you're at this, you're at this big concert with a bunch of other families and friends that are kind of interested in the same things you are. So there's a bigger crowd. Maybe you don't know everyone, but it's still pretty casual, pretty intimate, you know, um, you know, you're walking into the LinkedIn room. It might be that you're with your peers or you're, or you're going, you know, you're learning with people that do what you do. Um, but you're walking into a conference, like look at it that way, right? Like how would you show up to a learning conference in your space? Or maybe you are putting on the conference for your clients. How would you show up in that situation? So, you know, are you going to, are you able to be the exact, in the exact same outfit in all places? That's up to you. And that depends on you, your own personal style, your own personal boundaries, and of course your business and what those people expect of you, right? My point here is that there aren't really any rules. There aren't any templated rules anymore. It's not like you're showing up on LinkedIn for a job interview, right? So you can show up however you want to show up. And that's, that's my point is that it's just not, you, you don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, following the rules and not making a mistake and crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's and, and all that stuff anymore. LinkedIn is absolutely where you can be who you are in your own professional setting, whatever that looks like for you and your business. So that one's also debunked. Okay. Moving on to the last myth that I want to, or no, I'm sorry. I have two more myths. So this myth is LinkedIn is just a bunch of people trying to sell stuff. Okay, this one is debunked with a caveat. So here's the deal. LinkedIn is absolutely a place where there are people sharing all kinds of free content. I will tell you this. Rachel Hollis is on LinkedIn. Jasmine Starr is on LinkedIn. Uh, Gary Vee is on LinkedIn. Tony Robbins is on LinkedIn and they're not selling anything. They're just sharing all the same amazing stuff that they share on their Instagram accounts, in their Facebook groups, you know, in their email. When, if you get the emails from them, all the amazing teachings and free content that they're sharing everywhere else, they're also sharing on LinkedIn. They're not selling to you now. So, so you can get on there and not be a salesperson too. But there is a little thing that is kind of unique about LinkedIn There are a lot of people that send some really terrible direct messages. Okay, so here's the deal. If you are going to get in this platform and you're going to get all up in it, you're going to have to be ready for the influx of, I don't want to go ahead and call them spammers because they're not really spammers. They're just really aggressive salespeople, okay? So you get a network request from somebody, you don't know them, whatever. You say, yep, I'm going to connect with them. Uh, next thing you know, you're getting a message in your, in your direct message inbox on LinkedIn. And it is like, Hey, thanks for, it's great to connect. 
let me share a little bit about myself. And then it's like this three paragraph with four hyperlinks to work that they do. And then it's them asking if you wanted to have a conversation or if you're interested. And some of these people, and I'll say people with air quotes because they're not really people. I think they're bots. I think they're robots sending these messages for them. You'll get, if you don't respond, you'll get a follow-up email. Hey, wanted to see if follow up on my last message, yada, yada. You know what you can do? You can actually just say no thanks. And 90% of these people will be like, okay, great, no problem. Or they won't even respond to you. And if you want, if that happens, you can just disconnect from them if you want. If you don't like that approach, which personally I don't, either. Um, you can, uh, just, just know that this kind of comes with the territory. I don't know why these people do this. It is not effective. It certainly isn't effective on me. I'm going to guess that it's certainly not going to be effective on you either. Um, there are definitely people who will send you a direct message after they connect with you, but you can tell when it's a robot sending a message versus someone actually looking at your profile maybe commenting on some of your content that you've put out there, maybe commenting on something specific that they saw and actually genuinely wanting to connect with you. I have made some very good, genuine connections uh, on LinkedIn by, from people who have you know direct messaged me and wanted to connect about something very specific. I have had some really great relationships that have started to foster on LinkedIn, not with robots though. In fact, some people, I even mess with them and I will respond to them. If it's so bad, I will actually respond to them and, you know, kind of, kind of passive aggressively tell them what they're doing wrong and how much I don't like it. But, you know, that's just maybe I'm having a day where I need to do that. I don't know. But anyway, so yes, here's the deal. The, this myth is debunked because it's not just a bunch of people trying to sell you stuff. However, you are going to get a little bit of that influx of those direct messages from people that are just trying to sell stuff. Um, but that is certainly, uh, I think that, I think that eventually LinkedIn will actually catch up to that and they will change something about the platform that will make that be less and less and less. However, right now you just kind of have to understand it kind of comes with the territory if you're going to accept connections from people uh, that you don't know. So there you go. There, there's that one. All right. The last myth that I want to debunk is, is a good one. And this is a myth for people who probably haven't used the platform in years. And this myth is that you can't be interesting with the boring format that LinkedIn gives you. This myth is also debunked. Now, here's the deal. Back in the day, you pretty much could share text and maybe some art, like some links to some articles. And that was about it. Not the case anymore. LinkedIn, the newsfeed is full of video content, great imagery, inspiring posts that aren't just dry and corporate -y, like really heartfelt posts. They are, there's live video in the newsfeed of LinkedIn now. You can actually publish articles like blog post style articles with not only images embedded in them, but also videos embedded in them. So there are just so much more to the platform now. They have really enriched the type of the way that you can share content. You can absolutely be interesting and share your information with the world no differently than the ways that you share it on almost any other platform, social media platform that's out there right now. So imagery, uh, videos. Videos are huge. Videos do very well. Live video is they are in beta testing right now, only with a select, uh, select, uh, you know, a quantity of people. God, I really had a hard time saying that one, but uh, not everyone has live video, but it's coming. Uh, and you can also create articles now. So there's a lot of formats that you may not even be aware of that are available to you because you haven't used the platform in so long. It used to be pretty boring. I will give you that. It is not the case anymore. They now support hashtags. There's just so much more to the platform now. And so you can absolutely repurpose content and leverage the, the great things that you have to share and use the same strategy, a similar strategy that you're using in your other social media. And I am all about that. I have been not only uh, doing this myself and seeing great results uh, and amazing engagement, but I'm also seeing other people, for example, like Jasmine Starr, I see that she's using the platform in a much more heartfelt way than maybe you would have thought that someone like her would have used it a few years ago. There is a place for you to be touchy feely on LinkedIn. And so I love that. It's not just this dry, corporate -y, stuffy, boring, you know, looking for a job, HR interview, you know, all that stuff. You know, it's not like that anymore. It's so much more. And right now, because it is like has been this sleeping giant, 
and it's now being utilized more, the algorithms are friendly right now. We, as I said in the beginning of this episode, we are in a window of opportunity. That window will close as it has on Facebook, as it is closing in Instagram. The algorithms are making it harder and harder and harder for your content to organically reach people. However, LinkedIn is not the case. Here's the other thing I really love about LinkedIn. People, when they're on this platform, they're a little more intentional. They're on there for a reason. They're not on there just, you know, looking for a way to waste time, looking at, you know, catching up with their friends or catching up with the Joneses or keeping up with the Joneses, I mean, and looking at babies and puppies, right? They're they're not on there for like online shopping. They are on there for a reason. And so the mindset that they are in is actually more in the mindset frame to learn and to connect and to actually engage when they find content that that is valuable to them. Whereas on all the other platforms, it's so easy for people to get distracted because of the array of content and the array of reasons why they are logging into the platform in the first place. Whereas when someone's on LinkedIn, they're just a lot more intentional. Uh, And the other thing, here's the other crazy thing is there's a lot more desktop users. When I say desktop, I mean, they're on their computer. It's probably because they're at work or or, or something like that when they're on the platform. But they're, I, I, I actually truly, truly, truly believe that when someone is consuming content on a desktop, they are much more focused versus when they're on their phone where they're getting 80,000 distractions, whether it be text messages, phone calls, notifications, you know, all those things. When they're on a computer, they're sitting down, they're sitting you know, upright, they're not laying in bed, they're not laying in a chair, they're not at the, at the gym on the treadmill. Like they are actually sitting in a focused position. And they are more intentional and they're more, you're, they're, they're set up for success to consume and to actually remember what they're consuming. And so that is the other reason why I love LinkedIn is because I just think that it's just a different setting and it's just, it's a, just a more purposeful and intentional place when people are on there. And so that is something else that I want you to think about is that you're going to have a, their attention in a different way and their level of focus is going to be more in tune with what they're consuming instead of being distracted by everything else. So, so again, LinkedIn is, is kind of this exploding thing right now. And who knows what the conversation is going to be a year from now. But if you are looking for a space, if you're looking for something new, if you're looking for a way to see, to just test the waters and, and maybe reach a new audience or get a new type of engagement, I want you to explore LinkedIn, get logged back into your account get that profile optimized, start publishing content, start having those conversations. Okay. And as I said, in the beginning of this episode, if you want to learn with me and you want me to walk you through all of that and help you optimize that profile, help you know all the features and the way that this platform is, is what it's offering to you now and how to actually show up, uh, authentically and also reach people and, and find your, um, ideal customers, your ideal peers, your ideal helpers, I can do that. We can do that together. So go to melaniediane.com forward slash LinkedIn, and you will find the information for my LinkedIn workshop. Okay. So I'd love for you to check that out. And uh, if that's something that you want to do, I'd, I'd love to have you in the workshop so that I can, can help you get this LinkedIn thing going because the window of opportunity is kind of closing and uh, now's the time. I mean, now's the time. So you can go do your research and you will find that this is the conversation, the hot topic right now with uh, marketers because it is a real thing and it is working. And I think no matter what size of business you are, no matter what stage of business you're in, whether you like your job, love your job, hate your job, <laughs> LinkedIn is a place where you should be showing up consistently and regularly uh, for now and also for the future. So it's here and I think it's here to stay and I think it's going to get better and better. So get on it now before you feel behind again uh, in these platforms. So that's what I got for you guys today. I liked it. I don't know if you liked it. The myth busting. I'll just do a quick recap of those myths that we just busted. First one was that your LinkedIn profile is just an online version of your resume that myth is busted. Your profile can be so much more than an online version of your resume. Uh, The second myth was LinkedIn is for finding uh, a new job or employees for your business. Busted. It used to be a big old HR department and a big old place where you went and uh, either recruited people or looked for a new job. That is not the case anymore. People are learning and consuming and they are growing together. They are networking with peers. The conversation is totally different. Uh, The third myth, LinkedIn isn't for my business. That myth is also busted. And for 95% of you, that's what I'm going to say. So again, 
even though you're not in a B2B world, maybe the professionals, the working class needs your services and they need your products too. Um, the next myth that we busted is I can't be myself on LinkedIn because it's just too stuffy, too corporate. That myth is busted. You can be however you need to be when you show up in the space with your clients or your peers or whatever that looks like for you, uniquely for you. There is no rule. You have, you, you own your own boundaries based on your personal brand and your professional brand. The, uh, next myth was, it's just a bunch of people trying to sell stuff. This myth was busted with the caveat that yes, you're going to get a bunch of DMS from a bunch of people who are just don't care about you. And they just want to sell you something. I say, screw them and just delete them. Uh, and then the last myth was that you can't be interesting uh, on LinkedIn because of the formats that it provides to you. That myth is also busted. That is an old school uh, thing because yes, LinkedIn used to be super boring. It was like text only, nothing, nothing exciting was going on at all. Now there's video, live video imagery, there's articles, there's so, so, so much more to the platform. Now you can absolutely show up how you want to show up and be the interesting person that you are. Cause I will say, I will tell you this, a business or an industry can be boring, but people are not. And you, my friend, are not boring. So no, you, this myth is busted. LinkedIn can help you be the person that you are and showcase that in your authentic uh, and wonderful, beautiful way. So there you have it, my friends. Until next time, you are awesome. And I appreciate you so much for listening to this episode. Um, I loved it. I love the myth busting. I think I'm going to have to use this ep- this format again because it is fun. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got. So you guys get out there, check out LinkedIn and you know, the rule, go be awesome. <laughs>